Welcome to the world of mud. This 1972 TV series is a real gem, filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments that'll keep you glued to your screen. Did you know there are many lesser known facts and anecdotes about this series that fascinate viewers? And who could forget the classic Hollywood actor gracing the screen with their presence? Who was your favorite? We'd love to hear about your cherished memories or personal experiences related to this show. Share your stories in the comments below. So keep watching this video for some amazing insights into Maude. A groundbreaking TV series premiered in 1972, showcasing the life of a strong-willed and outspoken woman in her middle years. Set in the suburbs of New York City, the show follows the adventures of this liberal feminist as she challenges societal norms and confronts various issues such as women's rights, politics, and social justice. The central character's husband, a conservative man, often finds himself at odds with her progressive views, leading to frequent clashes between them. Alongside her, her best friend and her divorced daughter also play significant roles in shaping the storyline. Throughout its airing, the show garnered critical acclaim and received numerous awards for its bold portrayal of relevant social issues. Norman Lear, the producer, spotted Esther Roll's talent on Broadway and promptly cast her as Florida Evans in the series. Despite Maude's clashes with Arthur Harmon, she found common ground with him, though his moralistic tendencies sometimes tested her patience. Adrian Barbo stepped in as Carol Trainer after Marsha Rod chose to focus on theater instead of signing on to the sitcom contract. Florida's character transitioned smoothly to good times, where she continued to resonate with audiences. In the realm of classic television, one figure shone brightly, captivating audiences with her wit and resilience, while another remained a steady presence throughout the series. During its later seasons, the absence of a key character left fans longing for more, as her busy schedule often pulled her away from the screen. Conversely, the stalwart lead remained unwavering, embodying the essence of the show through her unwavering commitment. A pivotal moment came when the show, alongside two other beloved characters, graced the cover of Time magazine, symbolizing a shift in the television landscape. With its groundbreaking narratives and memorable characters, the show sparked conversations and challenged norms, leaving a lasting mark on viewers. Its impact endures, reminding audiences of the power of television to provoke thought and inspire change. This narrative, firmly woven into television history, stands as a testament to the enduring influence of a show that dared to push boundaries. After the series concluded, producers arranged for Conrad Vane to star in his own show, resulting in his role as the lead in Different Strokes. B. Arthur, a Tony nominee for her roles in MAME and a special theater event, won a Tony in 1966 for her performance in MAME alongside Angela Lansbury. She also garnered Emmy Awards for her work in Maude and The Golden Girls. Initially reluctant, B. Arthur guest starred in a couple of episodes of All in the Family at the insistence of Norman Lear, which eventually led to her accepting the lead role in the series. After a particular episode stirred controversy with its portrayal of a sensitive topic, the show never broached the subject again, leaving a lasting impression on viewers and sparking discussions beyond its confines. The episode's aftermath was felt both in the show's fictional world and in the real lives of its audience, underscoring television's ability to provoke deep thought and reflection. Moreover, some episodes ended abruptly due to longer runtimes experienced by the live studio audience, resulting in trimmed scenes or removed subplots to fit broadcast constraints. This was common during that television era when network schedules were rigid. Interestingly, Conrad Bain's identical twin, Bonar Bain, made appearances in various roles throughout the show, showcasing the brothers' acting versatility. Beyond Maude, Bonar pursued roles in films, establishing himself in the entertainment industry. In summary, the show remains significant in television history for its bold storytelling and talented cast. Its episodes, both controversial and lighthearted, continue to engage audiences today. Conrad Bain's twin brother Bonar made an appearance in one episode called Vivian Surprise. In 1978, while still on the show, B. Arthur appeared in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Despite it being widely regarded as one of the worst TV shows ever, B. Arthur enjoyed the experience. When she made a cameo on All in the Family, Williams Paley immediately called up Norman Lear and said, get that girl her own show. When they spun off and the ratings soared, the Hollywood community wondered, where has this girl been? Despite its lack of success in syndication, the 1972 TV series saw notable appearances from future stars. Notably, Rue McClanahan's autobiography recounts an incident at the 1974 Emmy Awards involving Bill Macy, which led to the show's disqualification from future Emmy consideration. 
However, B. Arthur did win an Emmy in 1977 for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. Additionally, Johnny Brown, Esther Roll, and John Amos, who later starred in Good Times, all appeared on the show. Tommy Blackwell, Ron Glass, and Conchata Farrell also made cameo appearances on both shows. In contrast to other Norman Lear sitcoms like All in the Family and Good Times, Maude didn't achieve success in syndication. Bill Macy revealed in a 2013 interview that the show concluded due to B. Arthur's divorce from Gene Sachs. He mentioned that B. struggled during the final season and wished to end the show. The third season lacked multi-part episodes and marked the last time Maud ranked among the top-rated shows. Audiences grew tired of her portrayal, causing the show to fall out of the top 20 Nielsen ratings permanently. NBC initially hesitated to cast B. Arthur in The Golden Girls due to perceived low ratings, but producer Susan Harris advocated for her, leading to her iconic role as Dorothy Spornak. Audiences quickly embraced her new character, and the Golden Girls became a massive success, overshadowing Maud in the process. When Hermione Badley first visited her character's namesake during the show's run, she received a warm welcome from the entire town, including the mayor and the police force. B. Arthur mentioned that her co-star, Esther Roll, didn't showcase comedic talent on the show until she starred in her own show, Good Times. Roll's comedic abilities were doubted by a Maud writer who famously said, My name is Esther Roll. I don't do windows and I don't do comedy. In season six, a tag scene was added to the end of each episode, marking a departure from the traditional two-act structure of Norman Lear sitcoms. These tags served as a unique addition to the show's format. In the early days of filming, B. Arthur expressed a preference for Marsha Rod to portray Carol Trainer, citing Rod's stronger, more confrontational approach in their scenes. However, Adrian Barbo ultimately secured the role, embodying a softer portrayal that initially disappointed Arthur. Despite this, Barbo's performance was integral to the series' success. Decades after its conclusion, only Bill Macy and Adrian Barbo remained from the original main cast. Remarkably, Macy was just five days younger than B. Arthur, while both actors were approximately nine months older than Conrad Bain. Fred Grandy, known for his role as Chris, Carol's fiance, would later find fame as Gopher on the Love Boat. His recurring presence on Maud added depth to the series, contributing to its enduring popularity. Television has been graced by unforgettable characters over the years, each leaving a lasting impression on audiences. One such character, portrayed by a talented actress, stands out for her wit and charm. Interestingly, this character was inspired by the creator's own life, adding depth to her portrayal. Diving into the actress's roles, we encounter a character with a peculiar name that holds historical significance. This name adds an extra layer of interest to the character's identity. Throughout her career, the actress demonstrated remarkable versatility, effortlessly transitioning between comedic and dramatic roles. Her ability to bring each character to life left a profound impact on viewers, inspiring both aspiring actors and loyal fans. In summary, the actress's influence on the entertainment industry is undeniable and timeless. Her diverse body of work continues to be celebrated, serving as a testament to her talent and dedication. With a special place in Norman Lear's heart, the TV show was considered his favorite creation. Prior to her role in it, B. Arthur had already made a name for herself on Broadway, showcasing her talent in various roles. The theme song, sung by Donny Hathaway, became a hallmark of the show, playing at the start of each episode. The show's exploration of timely issues and commitment to authenticity made it a memorable part of television history. Norman Lear's vision, coupled with B. Arthur's performance and Hathaway's voice, ensured that the show would be remembered for years to come. Throughout its run, the actress B. Arthur remained a consistent presence on the show. Debuting in 1972, it held its original time slot for two years before shifting due to the spin-off series. Despite these changes, B. Arthur remained a constant figure on the show. Interestingly, B. Arthur maintained a strong friendship with fellow actress Adrienne Barbo throughout and after the series. Their bond endured beyond the confines of the show, showcasing the lasting connections formed during the production. It's a testament to the camaraderie behind the scenes of the series. In the early 1970s, a TV show stood out from the rest and caught everyone's attention. It was so popular that it even got spoofed in Mad Magazine and parodied on The Carol Burnett Show. During an interview on The Today Show, the main actress, B. Arthur, was asked about being typecast as tough characters in this show and another one called Golden Girls. Her response was simple but meaningful. 
She said both roles were perfect for her because they suited her strengths, showing it was a deliberate choice rather than being stuck in one type of role. You can find this interview online if you're interested. Something interesting about the show's opening credits is that they used footage that was originally shot for another series called All in the Family Justice for All. That's why you'll see vintage cars from the early 1960s in the credits, which gives it a unique look. In short, this series didn't just entertain people, it also inspired funny parodies and made audiences think. And those opening credits, they give a cool glimpse into its connection with another well-known show. Launch the television career of Adrian Barbo. B. Arthur met Carol O'Connor in 1964 during a play called Ollie Sees in Nighttown. Eight years later, she guest starred on two episodes of All in the Family before starring in the spinoff. Rue McClanahan has called B. Arthur a very eccentric woman in interviews and said she didn't have much of a relationship with her, even though they worked together for 13 years if you count both the combined seasons of Maud and the Golden Girls. In a popular TV show, there was a surprising switch in roles for one of the actresses. She went from playing the daughter to a different character, causing some drama between her and the main character. Fans were puzzled but intrigued by the change. Behind the scenes, another actress formed a strong bond with her co-star, and their chemistry was a hit with viewers worldwide. As the series went on, some fans noticed similarities between an episode and another famous show's pilot. This led to speculation and theories among dedicated viewers. It was a fun nod to the past, showing the creator's attention to detail and love for TV history. Overall, these twists and details kept fans excited for each new episode. That's the magic of television every moment can bring surprise and joy. And so, the show's memory lives on, loved by fans for its humor, charm, and unforgettable characters. B. Arthur received a call from Norman Lear to guest star on All in the Family. Despite her aversion to flying, she agreed. This led to her role in the series. The episode where Maud had an abortion aired in November 1972. It gained criticism after the Roe vs. Wade decision. Rue McClanahan cast as Vivian, initially worried about not being funny. She even sought psychiatric help. Adrian Barbo, initially an unfamiliar actress, was guided into the industry by comedic actress B. Arthur. Their collaboration began on a TV series, a spin-off of All in the Family, where Barbo played Arthur's daughter for a significant portion of the show's run. Esther Roll, known for her roles in Maud and Good Times, shared a peculiar connection with her character. The last name of her character on Maud and Good Times matched one of her real-life sisters, and her character's first name, Florida, coincided with the state of her birth. Conrad Bain, a familiar face in the television industry, faced a series of losses in 2010. Within a week, he mourned the passing of two co-stars Gary Coleman, his adoptive son on Different Strokes, and Rue McClanahan, his on-screen wife in Maud. B. Arthur, known for her role in the TV series, has stated in interviews that she does not identify strongly with feminism or liberalism. During the early 1970s, while the show was still airing, Sammy Davis Jr. released his own rendition of And Then There's Maud, featuring additional verses and choruses reminiscent of the extended version parodied on Family Guy. As a lifelong liberal Democrat, B. Arthur supported various political figures such as Franklin D. Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, Adlai Stevenson, Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama. Her political beliefs aligned with her character's views on education, women's rights, gay liberation, and economics, mirroring the ideals portrayed in the series. The Arthur also contributed financially to the Democratic National Committee, showcasing her commitment to her political beliefs and causes. During Maude's run, B. Arthur took on the role of Vera Charles in the film Mame, alongside Lucille Ball. However, the film was a significant failure, which B. Arthur later regretted, feeling pressured into it by her husband and the director. Rue McClanahan, who played Vivian on Maud, was initially considered for a different role in The Golden Girls. However, to avoid typecasting, Betty White took on the role of Rose, while Rue portrayed Blanche. Maud also featured recurring variety episodes centered around a telethon where the cast performed, including Adrian Barbo's provocative dance routine, despite the questionable dynamic with Bill Macy, who played her stepfather on the show. Being the first spin-off of a popular TV show, it paved the way for a new era in television. Following the passing of one of its cast members in 2019, only Adrian Barbo remains from the original ensemble. Additionally, B. Arthur, alongside Rue McClanahan, shared the screen in the series. Later, the duo reunited for another successful show. In an MF Legends interview, B. Arthur made racially insensitive comments about her co-star Esther Roll. 
When asked about working with Esther, she referred to her as a black actress and all the baggage that goes along with that. In the All in the Family spinoff episode, a character makes patronizing anti-Semitic comments to Carol about her Jewish fiancé, which is ironic since B. Arthur herself was Jewish. Esther Roll didn't find success in acting until she was 51, when she landed a recurring role on Mon. Her character became so popular that producer Norman Lear decided to give her a spin-off sitcom, Good Times. In its final season, the show took a different direction, with the main character assuming a new role as a congresswoman in a three-part finale. However, the lead actor disagreed with this change and chose to stop the show. This decision resulted in the character's storyline wrapping up without any further exploration in later seasons. Interestingly, a similar theme was used in another series starring one of the actors from the show. One actor, known for appearing in both this show and another related one, played different roles in each. His versatility allowed him to seamlessly fit into various characters within the same universe. Notably, he portrayed a particular character in the related show, showcasing his ability to adapt across different narratives. The connection between two former cast members extended beyond the show's end. They reunited on a talk show years later to promote the release of the show's first season on DVD. This reunion emphasized the bond between cast members and their continued support for the series even after its run. In an interview, B. Arthur expressed her preference for Marsha Rod over Adrian Barbo as her on-screen daughter. Rod's portrayal brought a fiercer dynamic to their scenes, which Arthur found more engaging. However, when Maud became its own series, Barbo was cast, delivering a softer portrayal that disappointed Arthur. Barbo's character gradually faded from the show, with her sporadic appearances often resorting to cheap laughs about her physique, contrasting sharply with the show's feminist themes. Priscilla Morrill appeared in both Maud and All in the Family, along with a later role alongside B. Arthur in The Golden Girls, though never sharing screen time with her. In the world of TV history, a show brought together characters who left a big impact. Esther Roll and John Amos met while filming with Amos playing Roll's husband, Henry Evans. Amos later continued his role in a spin-off series called Good Times, where his character's name became James Evans Sr. Bill Macy, who played Maud's husband, had done different jobs before finding fame on TV. Despite the characters being complicated, B. Arthur and Macy stayed close friends off-screen. The switch of characters from Maud to Good Times shows how TV stories are linked and how actors can play memorable roles. B. Arthur, along with her former co-star Conrad Bain, stood apart as the sole cast members of Maud who didn't make an appearance on Murder, she wrote, a show that prominently featured her close friend Angela Lansbury. Reflecting on the series during an interview on Bob Costa's NBC Later talk show in the 1980s, B. Arthur singled out the episode where Walter bought the organ as the weakest installment of the series. Unveiling the lesser-known second verse of the show's theme song, it offered a glimpse into the formidable and independent nature of Maude, alongside historical references to figures such as Sweet Lysistrata, Columbus, Annie Oakley, and Queen Elizabeth. In a memorable episode of a beloved sitcom, during a birthday celebration, the character playfully stages their own demise while their spouse talks endlessly. This moment captures the character's irreverent spirit and fearless attitude towards life's absurdities. The actor who worked alongside another iconic performer fondly recalls their time on set, emphasizing the chemistry and camaraderie that define their collaboration. Their dynamic performances brought the characters and their world to life, leaving a lasting impression on television history. With the recent passing of a cast member who portrayed the endearing spouse, the surviving actor now stands as the only regular cast member left, serving as a reminder of the passage of time and the fond memories associated with the groundbreaking show. The show's enduring popularity continues to resonate with audiences, proving its timeless humor and relevance. Its influence on television culture remains profound, a tribute to the creativity of its creators and the talents of its ensemble cast. Indeed, the spirit of the show lies on, inspiring and entertaining with each viewing. In creating the character Florida Evans on the show, Esther Roll laid the foundation for a character that would go on to be featured in a spin-off series, Good Times. Carol shared many similarities with Maud. Both were outspoken liberal feminists unafraid to voice their opinions, despite often finding themselves at odds with each other due to their strong personalities. Following her time on the show, Adrian Barbo married John Carpenter and delved into a successful career in horror movies, appearing in notable films such as Carpenter's The Fog and Escape from New York, as well as Wes Craven's Swamp Thing and George Romero's Creepshow. 
In a surprising turn of events, a well-known actor from classic Western movies made a quick appearance on a popular TV show. This actor, famous for his tough guy roles and cowboy image, showed up unexpectedly, adding some excitement to the usual antics of the show. During a scene where two beloved characters were singing a familiar song, this actor stole the spotlight for a moment. The episode titled Maud Meets the Duke became a hit among fans because of this unexpected twist and the special guest appearance. The mix of humor and star power made it a standout episode. Even after the show ended, people still talked about this memorable cameo. It was a meeting between two big names in entertainment, captured forever on TV. In an Emmy TV Legends interview, Carol O'Connor likened B. Arthur to Nancy Walker, noting their shared quick wit and sharp tongues. Initially, Rue McClanahan wore heavy makeup and a gray wig to match Beatrice Arthur's age when portraying Vivian sporadically. However, McClanahan resisted this portrayal and eventually underwent a facelift in the show to explain her character's improved appearance. Doris Roberts, who was initially cast as Vivian, was let go after her portrayal was deemed too strong. She was replaced by Rue McClanahan, chosen for her ability to complement B. Arthur's tough persona. This change occurred after a run-through where it became apparent that Robert's interpretation didn't align with the desired dynamic. In a notable episode, a character portrays a congresswoman friend of the main character who tragically passes away during the story. This event was meant to pave the way for a spin-off where the main character runs for senator in Washington, D.C. However, after this episode aired, the lead actor chose to leave the series. Instead, another actor from the show took over the role of a freshman senator in a new series. Another interesting change between seasons involved the casting for the main character's daughter. In a previous show, one actor played the daughter, but when the main character got her own series, a different actor took over the role. Additionally, there are two episodes with similar titles in the series, but they each have different storylines. When B. Arthur was asked about reactions to the controversial abortion episode, she acknowledged the significant amount of mail received, noting that it was mainly from intelligent, caring individuals who expressed their displeasure and explained their viewpoints. Growing up in a small town where abortion was common despite being illegal, Arthur reflected on the issue's complexity and painful realities. Many viewers found it unbelievable that the character, a woman in her 50s, would become pregnant, considering typical biological factors. However, decades later, Adrian Barbo, who portrayed Maud's daughter, successfully gave birth at the age of 51, challenging those perceptions. Adrian Barbo, whose acting mentor was B. Arthur, had a prior connection to her through their performances in the original Broadway production of Fiddler on the Roof. Their bond extended beyond Maud, illustrating the lasting influence of their shared experiences on and off the screen. In a memorable episode of a classic TV series from the 1970s, a heartbreaking event unfolds as a main character experiences a miscarriage, diving deep into themes of sorrow and loss. This poignant moment sheds light on the complexities of life and the emotional depth portrayed throughout the show. The series, created as a spin-off of a popular sitcom, tackled various social issues of its time, including women's rights, politics, and family dynamics. It brought a fresh perspective to television, challenging norms, and sparking conversations. The central character, portrayed with boldness and wit, captivated audiences with her unapologetic nature. She stood as a symbol of feminism and strength, navigating through the challenges presented in each episode. Throughout its episodes, the show addressed taboo topics such as abortion, menopause, and infidelity, pushing boundaries and prompting discussions among viewers. Despite its serious themes, the show also provided moments of humor and warmth, balancing weighty topics with lightheartedness. The dynamics among the characters, including the central character's husband and daughter, offered a rich portrayal of relationships. In its exploration of human experiences, the show resonated with audiences of all ages, leaving a lasting mark on television history. Its enduring significance serves as a reminder of the power of storytelling to provoke thought and inspire change. In an unexpected turn of events, a sad incident overshadowed the filming of the show. One of the main actors had a heart attack, which stopped production and brought a heavy atmosphere to the set. Despite trying to get back to work quickly, it reminded everyone how fragile life can be, especially in the busy world of TV. The show tackled sensitive topics like women's rights, abortion, and societal norms. This made some people admire it for being brave, but it also got criticism. The show didn't shy away from controversial subjects, showing its commitment to addressing important issues. After six seasons, the show got canceled, marking the end of an era for fans in the TV industry. 
Even though it's no longer on air, its influence on popular culture is still felt today. It shaped TV shows that came after it, making its mark on future generations of television.